Hi there guys, welcome to the Shoegazer 93 channel once again. In today's video I'm going to do a tour of my t-shirt collection, my band t-shirt collection, um, which consists of Shoegaze and Dream Pop bands. So first of all um, I'm wearing an Aer Aerofall t-shirt, uh, a Russian Shoegaze band um, who have done one or two albums. I think they've done two albums uh, in the 2010s. And I'm wearing my trusty uh, cardigan, stripy cardigan, which is very shoegazy. Um, if you look at the videos, I think Kevin Shields uh, wears this a lot. He wears loads of cardies, but there's um, specifically a stripy one he wears on the You Made Me Realize live video. I think it's like. Um, like 1988 uh, on some TV show he's like wearing something like this and of course uh, the ride leave them all behind video uh, Mark, Loz and maybe Steve are wearing this kind of attire so yeah I'm definitely got, got the fashion going on <laughs> and um, this uh, this is the Sonic Cathedral um, label I was talking about. Um, this is the stuff they produce. Um, a London record label uh, who are specialising in um, shoegaze and dream pop music. Um, they've released um, Bedroom, uh, a band from Hull. That's one of their uh, bands on the, ro on the roster. And um, there was a guy who commented, somebody commented on my last video, um, which was the, how can we expand the shoegaze community? And basically he said, um, what t-shirt, where did you get that t-shirt from? The one with the uh, shoegaze written on it with the Fender Jag underneath. And basically um, that was really what prompted this video of the uh, t-shirt collection. Um, so this is the Sonic Cathedral uh, label I was on about. They do this like weird kind of format with the letters, which, uh, yeah, you can see there. Sonic Cathedral written underneath. Um, I would prefer it if they actually had it in one straight line because like not everybody can read it. Like There's not really much point in trying to promote a genre or a label if you can't really understand what it says. So, I mean, I know they're trying to really be arty and... I guess it it fits the kind of um the the deciphery kind of uh logic that you need to unlock shoegaze music cuz a lot of it's like you need need to decipher it so perhaps that's what it's trying to symbolize by making it hard to read the kind of mystery to the music it's maybe trying to represent that but I would just prefer it if they had it in one line to be honest, if they, if they did a bit of both, you know, some like arty ones like that, and then some sort of more understandable ones would be nice. Uh, this is quite, this is a uh, kind of shoegazy jacket, um, kind of grungy, I guess, as well. Um, basically, uh, yeah, I've got a Still in a Dream book. I know this isn't clothing, but I think I'll show you whilst um, I'm here. Whilst I've got it already, uh, still in the dream. Highly recommend this. A story of shoegaze from 1988 to 1995, so the first period. Uh, it's basically got key tracks from one key track from each key band. As it starts off with like, the proto gaze, so, like Jesus and Mary Chain, Cocteau Twins, ARK, and House of Love, Spaceman Three Leap. So, so it starts off with like, the influencers, the predecessors on uh, disc one who really made an impact on the scene and then disc two is like 1990 to 91 that's like the key period and then you get um i think also disc three is that kind of thing as well but these are like a bit more obscure bands and then disc four is um a lot of the american bands i think in disc four so it's saying how they influenced bands over the pond and there's also like Bail to Space from New Zealand and you've got Love Lies Crushing, which is like an American-Russian um, collaboration, I think, Scott Cortez. And Disc 5 is like 
the end so that's like 95 uh, 94 95 these are like last bands in that initial period so yeah you got that and there's a story of 4 ad by martin aston and i'm in the middle of reading it as you can see with the bookmark there um yeah obviously 4 ad and creation records are the two major labels which shoegaze bands thrived on so yeah i'm really keen on finishing that um anyway so to the clothing um i've got shit loads of ride t-shirts some official some unofficial some i've got from actually turning up at, at the gigs uh this is a nice one with the four four band members on it steve top steve Quarrel top left andy bell top right Lars colbert the best drummer in the world in my opinion bottom left and mark gardner one of the greatest songwriters ever um bottom right Incredibly famous for their use of 12 string Rickenbackers. I uh, got that. Hopefully, the camera picked that up. I've uh, got more like ride on it, unofficial stuff there. Uh, and this is stuff I got from during lockdown. Like, ride were doing this, like, getting these retro t shirts available. So, these are like reprints of ones. Uh, here's the Vapor Trail one with the hand on the front which is uh, actually Los Colbert's hand. He actually revealed on social media. Uh, he actually, that was his hands there. So yeah, the Vapor Trail, see it there. Vapor Trail written. Uh, that was part of this like, uh, yeah, it's retro giveaway basically. They brought all these t-shirts back and they played this like uh, gig in London, like to like no audience, just it was a stream that went went horribly wrong <laughs> but um, we all managed to see it in the end so it wasn't too bad uh, Blind Mr Jones I got this with like um, from Graveface Records they did like a um, a re-release of their Stereo Musicale album so I've only got, I've only got two hands unfortunately so I can't can't hold everything uh yeah, there's a random Star Wars poster. <laughs> so hopefully you can see that with the eye on the front. Blind Mr. Jones, probably maybe like one of the one of the rarest things I've got in my collection. And then so I've got an aerial t shirt here on the floor. Uh, fuck it now, I've gotta unravel everything. Ariel took me a while to get that one Jeremy Wren's band from Chicago Beautiful Noise 2017 album was brilliant a brilliant return um, I'm hoping for a new album from them actually they've got this single out called Balloon but they haven't done anything else after that so I'm kind of wondering when this album's going to be finished I guess they were, they were probably in the process of writing and recording it when this stupid lockdown happens so might be a while yet and uh got a cd collection now i'll do that in another video i've got lots of cds with signatures on it uh, so i've got sonic youth t-shirt dirty i've got the cure summertime summertime british summertime t-shirt that's when The Cure were playing in 2018 and Slow Dive and Ride were support bands as well as Interpol and The Twilight Sad. I think God is, God is an Astronaut were there. Hyde Park 2018, look. So that's a prized possession. Uh, I've got a Boo Radley's t-shirt here. Even though it's the Giant Step, Giant Steps era one, I would prefer it to be the Everything's Alright Forever period because that's definitely the more shoegazy period of the Boo Radleys. But uh, yeah, one of the only ones I could find on online, to be honest. Got it in a nice sort of dusty, sandy kind of orangey colour. Like a burnt, burnt orange colour. Um, yeah, well, I got loads of these Nowhere t-shirts, Ride Nowhere t-shirts. Nice white one I got. I got ones in black, and then I've got like 
the 2015 uh, Nowhere 25 uh, re-release T-shirt as well. Like the same print on it, but it's got all the tour dates on the back of it. Um, all right, this is my Weather Diaries T-shirt. This is when I saw them, got this when I saw them in Bristol 2017. Uh, so there's there's the front and then on the back should be the tour dates and this started yeah EU tour started in Spain and then I went to the Bristol one 9th of November 2017 I think you can see it there And um, so, what's next? Yeah, I've got the uh, this is not a safe place t shirt as well with all the tour dates on the back somewhere. Swerve Driver got their stuff with the pedals on the front. Really awesome t shirt, really awesome design. Six pedals on the front with the like the song titles on on the on the pedals. Rave down Mustang Ford, Southern Mustang Ford, Sci Flyer, Deep Seat, Sand Blasted, Pile Up. There were songs from the uh, the Rays album, nineteen ninety one. I've got Papaya Frouse, something a bit more newer. Bit more updated, Pia Fraus, uh, Estonian shoegaze band. Uh, kind of more in the dream pop realm, I would say. They're a bit softer sounding. Uh, much more take it easy kind of sound about them. I mean, they still got they still got the uh, the nice uh, whammy bar kind of stuff, but it's uh, not so distorted. It's a much more nicer brand of uh, shoegaze. Well, nicer as in, like, uh, less uh, powerful, I would say. Less powerful. Because uh, all, all shoegaze is nice, in my opinion. Well, apart from that Drop 19 song called Rem Remember Berry, or however you say it, that's, all, that's, how you not, that's not how you do shoegaze. That is not how you do it. That on that stupid uh, Delaware album, I really don't rate it at all. I know many people do, but uh, nah, not for me. Um, 2015, this is the uh, 2015 tour where I saw Ride at uh, London Roundhouse, 24th of May, 2015. I don't know if it's coming off from the camera. Might be a bit dark, it's all a bit shadowy here. But I basically went to the London one, which was the uh, third British date. And that was an awesome gig. They played Close My Eyes, which really surprised everybody. And they played uh, that song from Tarantula, um, even though it's a bit of an average album. Uh, they played Black Knight Crash, and I thought that was really good. Um, what have I got here, then? Uh, got a nice baggy champion T-shirt, which kind of fits the kind of 90 style uh, that I always wear about. Um, Dive Deceiver. This is when, uh, this was the last gig I saw before coronavirus hit. Dive, uh, live in Bristol, SWX. February the 20th, I believe it was. So yeah, just got I got the one with the band members on the front. And I actually met them after the gig, and they were really cool guys. Really cool guys. Had a nice chat with them outside. Got a photo with them, and uh, I actually looked like a band member, which is the cool thing. Uh, apart from the drummer, I didn't see the drummer there, so it was like me and the three other guys, and it looked like I was part of the band, which was which was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, 2020 tour that you can see. Uh, I've also got a Nothing T-shirt, 2018. So they're the two American bands I've seen, uh, Nothing Can Dive. They're the only two I've seen so far in the in the shoegaze world. 2020 tour, Bristol should be there somewhere. 
near the, it was the first one actually first one off the tour and then I think they had to there it is Bristol UK 20th of February yeah I think they had to like cut the tour halfway through because coronavirus hit the world and that was it uh, I've got a slow dive here here's my nothing t-shirt look this was um saw them in Bristol I think you can tell that basically Bristol is not where I'm from but it's my nearest port of call um, there really isn't uh, there really isn't like an international gig venue in Plymouth um, at the moment so Bristol which is about nearly two hours car drive away from here that's my nearest port of call basically so I always end up going there for gigs I uh, saw nothing at the Fleece. This is when Brandon Setter was still in the band. And uh, I believe he is a great songwriter and I think uh, they're going to be missing missing his sound. I mean, Tide of Tomorrow is my favourite Nothing album, closely followed by Guilty of Everything. But the last two, I don't really go... Yeah, they've got some like, message on the back, basically taken after the Nirvana style. Um, but yeah, really cool. So they're two like modern band ones I've got. Um, adorable, I've got adorable T-shirt. When I saw them in the um, when they reformed in twenty nineteen, I saw them at the Scala or Scala, however you say it. Yeah, and I met the guys. Met Robert. He chatted to me for ages after the gig, which probably caused. A lot of angry faces, to be honest, because I, I was kind of uh, chatting away for ages and no one else was getting the chance. But, you know, I knew that they wouldn't be back, so I took the... I seized the opportunity to chat as much as I could. Basically nerd out, basically. <laughs> I nerded out. <laughs> and he, he actually gave me a, uh, a free um, a vinyl of Against Perfection, which was really cool. He, like, just grabbed it he grabbed it from the merch desk for me and like I thought it was just such a great kind moment so thank you Robert Dillon if you're watching cheers and basically oh uh, yeah shoegaze a t-shirt this is a Sonic Cathedral one and that's with the um the shoegaze that wrote in the line which is what I like but it's basically a um, parody of the Supreme. You know, the whole Supreme My Bloody Valentine thing it basically like occurred after that happened and Nathaniel Cramp obviously did a little parody version of it. Because <laughs> apparently Shoegaze is mainstream now. Oh dear. <laughs> um, so I've got another ride one there which is part of that bundle I was on about, the re-release thing they did in 2020. A real vintage one. This is like uh, extra, extra large. This one, just one that's something really baggy. Yeah, I'm not going to get it all out. Uh, Boot Radley's one from 1991. Um, Every Heaven. See that? It's the Every Heaven EP um, cover on it. That's something I got from eBay, obviously. Um, oh, yeah, Chapter House Whirlpool. I've, I've worn this one a hell of a lot. That's why it's kind of faded. The cat's faded. Kind of makes it more shoegaze in a way, because the cat's faded. It's, you know, kind of that blurry, fadey effect makes it more shoegazy, I guess. <laughs> there you go, Whirlpool. <sighs> Fortunately, I didn't catch them in, in 2009, 2010. Uh, they played at the Scala, same place I saw, and adorable, but um, I wasn't even into shoegaze back then, so uh, I <laughs> know where I could have gone. I've uh, got a swell driver set list there. Really good. Adam Franklin signed it. Um, what else can I show you? I've got like a general, like, uh... all right, these are my ticket stubs here. Look. I've got a swerve driver, ride, dive, Proshka which is Mickey Berenyi's um, little band at the moment with uh, 
with moose in it. Uh, I've got, um, yeah, a general, like, this is something I got from, like, Redbubble or something. A general shoegaze t-shirt, basically, with, like, lots of a ver variation of uh, album covers on the front. Unfortunately, though, I cannot name them all. There's two I really don't know about. Obviously, you've got Heaven in Las Vegas there. You've got Mezcal Head, Whirlpool. Don't know about what's under the E letter, and I don't know what's under A. Uh, obviously, Loveless, Spooky, Nowhere, Suvlaki. But yeah, those two, like, I think somebody identified them on the Facebook group, but I can't remember off the top of my head what they actually are, which is fucking appalling, really, considering I'm, like, the biggest shoegazer in the fucking world. I should really, really know everything. But <laughs> guess you can't know it all. Um, so, yeah, that's... If I go into this room, I've got even more. Um, I think so, anyway. But it has, it's all been reorganised, so... Oh, yeah, I've got the Creation Records t-shirt with Alan McGee's signature on it. That's something cool to see. When I met McGee, um, he did, like, a talk in Exeter... Um, and I met him after the speech. It was really interesting. Stuff he was saying about Loveless and like he actually appreciates it now, which, uh, yeah, kind of shocking, really, because he kind of he kind of toys with that, you know? Sometimes he, he changes his mind all the time about that. Sometimes he criticises the album and sometimes he praises it, so really hard to know what he really thinks of it. All right, another ride one there. Oh yeah, this is a chapter house one. This is actually the first chapter house t-shirt ever printed. Um, this is from the Falling Down EP and I got it from Rachel Goswell's auction online. So that's really, this is a real collector's item and, and a prized possession of mine. Um, yeah, so awesome. I wore it at the um, the Ride Oxford gig in 2019. So yeah, th th this has got lots of history to it and I'm definitely keeping that safe. I'm not going to wear it too many places. But yeah, definitely a prized possession of mine. Uh, and I like this one. I love this ride one. Great design with the roses on the front. Maybe uh, it might be a little nod to Stone Roses as being a big influence on the band, perhaps. But yeah, I love that one. Nice long sleeve like that. Nice and baggy. Definitely my style. Nice general stripey, very shoegazy style. That's the front of it. Love this. This, this is my favourite jumper out of all of them. Got that on eBay. Yeah. So just finishing a video, Mum, OK? Just finishing a video for YouTube, OK? So I'm just finishing a video for YouTube. Um, what else can I show you? <laughs> Sorry, just speaking to my mum there. She's just got back from work. Um, yeah, my bloody Valentine. Yeah, probably wondering, <laughs> probably wondering when this was going to come up. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I've definitely got MBV merch on me. Don't shoot me just yet. <laughs> this is the um, I think feed me with your kiss feed me with your kiss uh, jumper very comfortable to wear I love this one so comfortable um, I've also got the, the loveless I've got some unofficial loveless one as well which I've actually worn in a YouTube video before There it is.
Iconic. Iconic. Slow dive. Don't think I mentioned them yet. Got a sub lucky one. No point in unraveling that because everyone's seen it a mini, million times. Oh yeah, Ringo Death Star t-shirt. Haven't seen them live yet. But one day I will. Once this bloody pandemic's over. There you go. With the Texas, where they're from, the Texas uh, map on the front. So I just got that from, I think, Bandcamp, I think. Bandcamp's obviously another key place to buy merch from. And um, obviously it's really good for the artists as well because I, I guess the money goes straight to them through that platform. And I've got another ride one. This is a nowhere one. Basically like the full sea on it. Full ocean. This was the 2015 tour as well. This was the festival tour one. Uh, I didn't see them on any of these dates though. They did do they did field day, but that was like a couple of weeks after I saw them at the roundhouse. I didn't go to that. I was at uni at the time, so I couldn't couldn't really go through everything. Uh, this is another Sonic Cathedral one. Sonic Cathedral. And you got this kind of Spaceman 3 style um, fire, playing with fire kind of style to it. 91 in the middle. Obviously being the key year for shoegaze. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much about it, finally. Finally, you're probably thinking. <laughs> Yeah, I've pretty gone overboard with this collection, haven't I? <laughs> I still I still want to expand it even more. With all the gigs I, I'm going to go to in the future. Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much the crux of it, really. You know, 